Um, so just to just to start off by just introducing myself, um, Jerry Hughes, and there's my wife Lisa and little Emily in the back there. They're going to be doing the babysitting for a couple of kids throughout the weekend. Um, I have now six kids, um, stepfather, father, six kids. Oldest is uh, R. The two oldest are 16 now, and the youngest is turning three in a little bit here. Um, the way I got started in this was um, really there was a turning point that came with with in my life when when I got to being a father and I and I had kids that were starting to struggle in school and there was this awakening that came because the struggles that they were having were way too familiar mm -hmm. um, and I was never I mean I went through school I was never diagnosed with anything okay but I I could barely read it about 80 words a minute in high school I don't know what the grade level was because I was I mean I was always pretty intelligent but my actual reading level was about 80 words a minute. That was a, you know, boom, that was the best I could do. Um, uh, every report card I got for 12 years, in, in from kindergarten through high school, said, uh, Gerald needs to focus, Gerald needs to pay attention, Gerald needs to apply himself. Um, Gerald has a lot of potential, you know, Gerald is intelligent, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think at one point, if I heard the word, you know, potential one more time, <laughs> I was going to kill somebody. Um, fortunately, I didn't. So, without having any any extra, really anyone that really understood my thought process. I mean, I knew I was, just, I just knew I was different, probably in the sixth grade. Um, in fact, what got me through math was, um, at some point in the sixth grade, I realized that if I waited to listen to the teacher to explain math to me, I had no idea what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like Greek. I mean, she, uh, uh, wah, the Charlie Brown character, you know, wah, 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 the way all the adults sound. I mean, it made no sense to me at all. But if I took the book home before she s opened her mouth and I looked through and I, and I went, okay, I was good to go. I, I mean, it was like boom, boom, boom. I got it. And... Um, and that lasted all the way up through, uh, all the way up to calculus. And then my way of thinking and learning and intuiting, in, intuiting math broke down because calculus is a whole different way of thinking. It's it's not intuitive anymore. It's just totally different. Um, but that was how I got through math. Oh, here they are. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Kat. Sorry, we'll be playing on all that traffic. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll right back here. So, yeah, you guys get settled in. We're just, I'm just introducing myself, but you already know who I am. So, um, just get settled in, and uh, we'll see you in a second. Um, so, um, about junior high, I started self-medicating, and that seemed to work really well for me. Um, um, uh, fortunately, my parents had a well-stocked liquor cabinet um, that didn't, you know, nobody noticed little bits missing here and there. Um, so I was able to stay, you know, pretty mellow through most of eighth grade and, and freshman year without getting in any too much trouble. Um, <coughs> showed up drunk at a couple school dances, and, you know, uh, that was di a different time back then. They, they never noticed back then. They, they, you know, <laughs> they just totally ignored the whole thing. They just, the parents and the teachers, they just... Um, um, the closest I came to getting in trouble was, I mean, I was, uh, we had a, we had a junior class, it was a junior class, because I was driving by then, um, and it was a junior party, like a cut day or something like that. And I was hammered at like nine o'clock in the morning. I mean, I mean, totally hammered. And I walked into English class looking for my friend because he got lost, you know. And I walked in. I said, "Is Gene in here?" And and I think the English teacher said, "You need to leave." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay." Boom. Anyway, um, so so that was kind of how I got through my some of those early years. Um, 
but ultimately, you know, that just accelerated um, as is fairly common with us guys. And, um, and then kind of crashed and burned in my early 20s. Um, so, you know, that was the kind of road I took. Um, it got me to where I am today. I don't recommend it. <laughs> you know, um, you know, even if you're lucky enough to live through it, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, I don't think it's the best way to go. I'm pretty sure it does damage. So, yeah, yeah. I'm probably missing a few brain cells. Yeah. Um, but, the, but here's the thing. When I saw my kids starting to have those same struggles, I took it very serious, very seriously. And I said, there's no way I'm going to sit back and let this happen. So we started the conventional road. Alex was coming out of, you know, my wife was coming, my wife now was coming out of a divorce that was kind of messy. Um, and um, her son was really caught in the middle, her oldest son. Um, and then um, and then my wife and I got divorced. So we were, we're, this is both our second marriage. Um, and our kids have been in the same class. They were in the same class for like 10 years. So so we knew each other for like eight years before, before we got married. Um, but they were, ha you know, they were both having different struggles. My son more with the ADHD side. Her son with was diagnosed with ortho orthographic dyslexia. Um, and we started the conventional road. You know, he went to Linda Mood Bell, which is a this awesome phonics-based program for reading. Helps all kinds of kids. He was getting counseling and therapy. Um, and Avery was getting some tutoring and, and this and that. I forget what else we were doing, some counseling to. Um, and and it, it just, nothing was, it wasn't clicking. I mean, even after, gosh, six months of this training, this bombardment with phonics and everything, Alex's reading hadn't changed at all. He was still reading at a second grade level in the fourth grade. And his spelling, he, he was still only able to spell about half the words correctly. So... I'd been, I'd been involved in something called Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP, for years. I'd, I'd been around, I'd gone to, you know, some of the Tony Robbins kind of work, you know, those really, like, awesome, you know, dun, 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 you know, uh, you know what, what conquer the world, unleash the power within, you know, the really cool, <laughs> go get them type stuff. Um, so, I knew, and I'd seen, I'd seen what NLP could do. I'd see it make changes in people like really fast, like really, I mean like in, in minutes, stuff that people struggled with for years was suddenly gone in minutes because they changed the way they processed information. That was it. They changed their relationship or their perception of the world and things were totally different for them forever. It was like amazing. So I said, there's some tools in here that I know can work. In this in this domain but unfortunately I looked all over all over and um, my wife found one guy she found an article written by this guy Tad James from Australia back in I don't know the 90s or something like that that was dealing with kids and learning and so we got we got in touch with him and you know nice guy um, but he wanted fifteen hundred dollars an hour five hour minimum to work with your kids like okay we got, yeah let's see one two <laughs> okay. three four five you know six possibilities here times what is that seven eight grand <laughs> well you just go with the oldest kid and hope he passes it on oh, <laughs> yeah well something like that yeah so 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 they were like well you know we're doing this thing in, in san francisco this little introduction to nlp or creating your future and i thought oh okay so let's and they said bring your kids okay so we brought we brought our two oldest boys and they're like, okay, what do you, what is this about? But you know what? They went through the little exercises, and and they like, they I could see the shift in this like one little weekend. They, there was this shift in how they were looking at themselves. So I said, okay, so we're on to something here. Um, so that that was the start of it. My getting my formal training. I worked with Tad. Um, I subsequently worked with a few other guys here and there. Um, and um, combined the NLP with some other things, like, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Brain Gym, Paul Dennison, um, he really was the pioneer of that. 
um, brain balancing. I think now some, some folks call it brain balancing and think different things. Um, so um, the root, it's all rooted in kind of kinesiology. I think that's the foundation for, for all that stuff. And it's that, that physical, that mind-body connection. Very powerful. So anyway, um, got the basic training. And one of the things was, and, and you, you probably, if you've looked at any of the videos that I've done or anything online or something, you've seen that little spelling strategy where, you know, they take the word and they, we put it on a card in like two colors, you know, and we, you know, you have them look up to the left and you spell the red, spell the blue, spell the red, spell the blue, and then you close your eyes and you spell. And it was like, I came back and, and this was like, it was like in the first week or so of my training, and I, this was one of the things we learned, right? So I came back and I tried it on Alex, and he's like, boom, 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 forwards and backwards. And I was like, ooh, ooh, this is, now we're on to something here, goosebumps, goosebump test. And um, so we went through his spelling words, right? 100% on his next test. 100%. I was like, okay, we are seriously on to something here. Um, in fact, in now five years or something or of vocabulary and spelling tests, he only got like less than an A on one test. And that's because he was really pissed off at me and didn't want to study. He's like, well, I'm not going to use your way. I'm going to do it my own way. And he got like, a, you know, a C or something on it. Um, but so, so I could, I, that was it right there. I was sold. If nothing else, if I just saw that, it was, it, it was amazing. Um, the reading took a little longer. It was a little more complex. But the, the foundation was, I saw the foundation was there and started going down and talking to more people and pulling some, some tools from here and there. Um, and and ha really, I think really having my own understanding of dyslexia and ADD and, and how I see the world and perceive the world and think and, and, and process information, um, it's really helped in, in working with these kids over the years now. I mean, Alex went from a second grade reading level in the fourth grade to a 12th grade reading level at the beginning of eighth grade when they did their star testing or something like that, their assessments. Um, um, he and Avery both, oh, Avery went from the bottom of his math class, taking an hour and a half, two hours to do his math homework, to being one of the two fastest kids in math. I mean, they were so far above the class. They had their own class, this super advanced algebra class. Um, and, you know, both Avery and Alex wound up taking geometry their first year in, in high school. They skipped Algebra 1, went right into geometry. They went right into Spanish 2. They went right, and this was a kid who reading was torture, or math was torture, homework was torture, all this stuff. I mean, the complaints from both of them, I mean, it was like a list as long as my arm. And when they, by the time they got to, to high school, they were basically straight-A students, you know, Alex was at a 12th grade reading level plus, Avery was at a 12th grade re reading level plus, um, they went into Spanish 2, they skipped Spanish 1, they skipped, they went into AP English, they went into um, AP History, um, what else did they do? I mean, they both played sports all year, Alex maintained a 3.87 GPA, you know, through the year. Um, Avery didn't do quite that well, but it was really because he wasn't committed to it. But he was still a three-point something, you know. Um, so anyway, that was the beginning. From there, um, I, st I worked with a couple of their friends and a couple other kids in the school. And, and, and it was like, boom, it was like these results were like, like way beyond the norm. It wasn't like they would just get a little bit better. Like you put in a couple of hours or a couple of weeks and they'd maybe you know, increase their skills by 10% or 20%. They like, like 100% different. It was like going from Fs to Bs in like a month or two. So it was huge. Um, and, and then the word just started to spread. Um, so I think within a year of working with my kids, um, it, was, it was the volume. I was getting enough requests that I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, I have to do this. So, you know, I knocked on wood and, and said, okay, well, I gave, my, I gave my company, you know, six months notice to give them time to replace me. Um, and um, 
opened up the Learning Center, actually up the hill. We've been moving down the hill since then. In, uh, but uh, started out in Placerville and then was in uh, Cameron Park. And, uh, and, and other than the economy collapsing, <laughs> things slowing down, um, it's, it's, it's been pretty well, been pretty steady. Um, probably half of our business now is referrals from parents. How do people hear, I'm just curious how people hear about you. I mean, I found you through Facebook. Cause yeah, that yeah. just happens because we were both in that group. But I uh, never would have found you otherwise because I searched the internet and you've never popped up. Yeah. And yeah. I was in school, my son was in school in Folsom, which isn't too far away. It's just down the street. And yeah. still, we hadn't heard of you. We were looking for help then. I'm just it's, curious. It's tough. It's you know. tough. I mean, I, my, my website has been up for five years now. And, um, Which, of course, I didn't write normal in, and drift, you know, I, I just wrote ADHD, yeah. you know. And, and, but here's the thing, you know, I mean, without disclosing my income, you know, I'll just say it's, you know, it's a modest income. And, um, you know, there's guys, the drug companies and, and whatnot, um, I mean, they, yeah, they, 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 they pay every billions, they yeah. millions of dollars. Right. Uh, uh, uh whatever a year or something to come up on those on right. those ads yes. and you know I mean we can't I can't afford to, no. to compete but, with that. Like, are you allowed to way. tell the schools that you exist? Are you allowed to go to the schools and say hey you know if you're having kids that fall in the Yes system? I am and I have I have a, there's several teachers and counselors that under certain circumstances they can covertly tell parents unofficially it, yeah, to check me out. If you want, the trouble right. is the school district, their official policy is typically, I know in El, El Dorado, uh, the El Dorado County School mm -hmm. District, their official policy is it's an educational issue, we can handle it. So, right. you know, there's a whole politics around education, which we, which we talk about with, with parents and what's reasonable to expect. I mean, I've kind of gotten hammered on Facebook for saying, right. you know, in my opinion, school, public schools right. for ADD, school, it sucks. It, it really sucks does. for us. Yeah. We don't think like that. We don't think linearly. We don't. We don't think auditorily. We don't think verbally. We don't. We we're not cut out to sit in a class for five hours and just listen to someone uh, 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 drone on and on about something that we could care less about. So, oh, you guys don't have your books yet. <laughs> so, um, not that I have actually opened up the book yet. Um, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the schools districts. I'm kind of like an underground success. There's been teachers. Um, here, here's the, here is one funny thing. If I get one kid in the class, right, I usually get the other two. Right. The, there's like, because in a typical class of like 24 kids, right, you'll you'll have like two or three kids that are ADD. Mm -hmm. You know, about 20% of the class. And if I get one, because the parents talk to each right. other. I'll often get the other two, right. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Um, but I've had a couple of uh, teachers send people, send kids to me. Um, one of my success stories is um, a gal named Bet, who is a special ed teacher, mm -hmm. and she saw one of her uh, uh, kids, her students, come through here, and and the results. And she was like, you know, because her son was diagnosed with autism and dyslexia. And um, okay. Aren't you supposed to have tricks so you don't do have things like that happen? I don't know. Are you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My my brain's too too important and busy to worry about where things Parking, are and yes. what time to do go places. Um, uh, I say that half kidding me. Uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, now now she's a, she's a gal with all the training, all the skills, and definitely committed to her son. I mean, there's no lack of of, of commitment there. And still, he got to be about 10, 11 years old. And they were telling her that, you know, there's no way this kid's going to succeed in, in a normal classroom. We'll put him in special ed, you know, we'll do what we can for him to kind of get him through the system. And, uh, and that's, that's it. And, and, I mean, she was, she was just devastated. Um, so she brought him here. And, 
um, and um, started working together. Um, really interesting because one of the things I saw in him that where she saw, she was able to see in him that was really apparent, um, which is sometimes more subtle in other kids, was how we installed several strategies for particular skill, for particular areas and instances, and he very quickly generalized those strategies into other areas. Right. Um, and one by one, we worked on the different skills for dis, you know for the reading struggles, the writing struggles, the math struggles, um, and of course with autism, there's certain struggles they have with like recognizing uh, verbal patterns and sarcasm and facial expressions, uh, inductive and deductive reasoning can be a struggle for them. And one by one, we just tackled all those things, and he went from you know thinking, well maybe I can be a mechanic or something or whatever to hey I'm going to college and and uh, and I'm you know I can play the guitar and go on stage and I mean it was like this this whole new kid opened up right. which was very cool the whole world opened um, up. and um, a year and a half after we met um, she dropped by almost in tears because uh, Spencer had made the honor roll all wow. regular classes and and he's just like you know, boom, he, he's in the zone. Um, very cool, very cool sort of story. Um, but see, that's the kind of thing when you've got a child that's intelligent, you know, um, and fortunately most of these kids are intelligent, you know. They're so even higher intelligence than their teachers very half often, the time. Very often they are. <laughs> they are. Yes, and that's, yes. I think, half the frustration is they're so beyond their, what their teacher's saying in their own head mm -hmm. that they're just like, so yeah, a lot of these guys, uh, they're, they're, they're actually processing information mm -hmm. about 500 times faster than their teacher can right. talk. So they've already come <laughs> to the conclusion and the yeah, end of the session. they've already been there and, and back yeah, before, and so before she can finish what's, coming, what's yeah. coming out of her mouth. So, you know, that's why you see them, they're off, you know, looking outside, trying to find some stimulation, rocking back and forth. This is all self-medication, kind of, you know, rocking back and forth, trying to keep their focus trying to keep engaged, to keep from going crazy, and they're kind of half listening to the teacher. They're still one step ahead of her. Um, the only problem with that strategy is what they're doing is they're taking the information in to this little buffer that we have, this short-term memory, mm -hmm. and they don't go from here just into long-term storage. They process it. And they very quickly, in the moment, boom, 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 decide whether I need this or not, yes. and then it just gets flushed out the bottom. Yes. <laughs> so, so they see, if if we were teaching using a Socratic method, okay, these guys would be awesome, awesome, absolutely awesome. They would be engaged. They would be boom, 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 coming up with answers. Boom, raising, boom, boom, boom. Very cool stuff. Unfortunately. Only 20% of the class would be succeeding. Now, it's the, our 20%. It's it okay. would be our 20% succeeding, <laughs> but the other 80% would be failing. <laughs> it's time to switch it. It's okay. So that's <laughs> so that's the problem. That's so anyway. Um, yeah, I've been criticized for for bold, you know, outside the box <laughs> statements, but I do. I think you know. I don't. I can't think of a single ADHD kid. That if he had his choice, would 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 stay in an environment like public school. Now, right. can we give them the skills to succeed? I, in most cases, absolutely, absolutely. Um, a lot of these guys that have come through here, man, they they do their work in half the time. They take their tests in half the time. They're reading at three, four, five hundred words a minute if they feel like it. Do you about test taking? Because this is one of my kids probably and mm -hmm. since day one and it might just be a boy thing of a competitive nature first one done first one done it doesn't matter everything's wrong first one done I mean that's just goal that's just like <laughs> I don't know right. how to I mean we've tried for years of just slow down read the question you know which <laughs> yeah well there's a there's a you know here's one of the the found fundamental uh, tenets or or principles of, of NLP and that is behind every behavior is a positive intention. Right. Okay? 
he feels very successful when he's first going dead. Yeah. And he feels like, I, I so, won. I so that's it. And yeah. That's it. He's, so. he's satisfying that intention. Right. And again, I think it's a partially a boy thing of that competitive nature in them. Of, Could you know, be. It's yeah. a little bit of that with the ADHD and the, you know. Could be. <laughs> so, um, and again, and I'm going to try to, like I said, I'm going to try to get you guys out of here by like 8 o'clock tonight. So we're not going to be too late. Um, mostly what I want to do tonight, because we're going we're gonna to break this up into, for the guys that are here for all six days, we're going to break this up into about four key areas. The first area, which is tonight, is to just lay that foundation of how these guys relate to the world. How do they think? How do they process information? When you say something, what do they hear? And when they say something, what is it they really mean? Okay? So this is critical for communication, for relationships, for learning, the whole ball of wax. So that's, where, that's what we're going to do tonight, is learning styles and strategies, we call it. But it's really understanding this particular group of kids. And I'm going to lump them all into one group for now. For just, to, oh, just to simplify it, there's going to be them, the normal folks, and us. And and you could I'm gonna and, and even in the in, in the even in the DSM well the old DSM um, I don't know about the DSM five I haven't read that yet but but they kind of have this broad category it's called pervasive development disorders and that's kind of the catch-all there's then there's eighty in, within that within that that you know here's PDD pervasive development disorders and within this you know you've got this group of symptoms that's called uh, ADHD. And then there's this other group of symptoms called um, sensory integration disorder. And then there's this other group of symptoms called um, auditory processing disorder. But, and I think they've changed the names of those too. And then they've got another one they call, you get these symptoms and then you're autistic. Does that make sense? But the, the overall, umbra oh, and then if you're really all, all over the place, kind of like, um, let's see, you're kind of like, this is my favorite. You got, you, got, you got a little bit of this, and 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 a little bit of this. Then you're PDD NOS. <laughs> so that's the box you fit in if you don't fit into the box, any of the other boxes. But they're all basically in that group of pervasive development disorders. There's no test for it. Uh, uh, there's no there's no objective test for it. There's no test like like if you suspect someone has strep throat, what do you do? Culture. You you take swab. a little swab. You send it to the lab. They grow something, and it comes back yes or no. There is no in between. There is no half strep throat. You know, it's kind of like half pregnant. There, you know, you can't be half pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. You either have strep throat or you don't. Well, this, you know, what they do for all these things is they give the mom a test to fill out a questionnaire, and they give the teacher a questionnaire, and they give the doctor a questionnaire, and, and maybe the psychologist or psychiatrist, and you put all these questionnaires together, and somebody goes through, and they say, well, okay, well, here's the DSM. I still have the DSM-4, but just pretend I have the DSM-5. And they go through, and I could, okay, so he has three of these, uh-huh, and he has four of these, and he has five of these, so he's, he's ADHD today, okay? And I hear parents come back all the time. By the time a kid's 10 years old, um, it's not uncommon to say, okay, well, we went to the, the doctor once, and he was ADHD. And then we went to the doctor, and they said he was auditory processing disorder with an anxiety disorder. And then we went a year later, and he was sensory integration disorder with an anxiety disorder, depression, and possible ADD. <laughs> and that's not uncommon, because depending on who's evaluating and how he's been, you know, what have you been feeding him the last month, and and what, what stress he's been under. I mean, there's so much to, to, to go into this, in my opinion, that um, it doesn't seem uncommon for kids to get placed in different categories. Um, so, um, one, we're not qualified to do diagnosis. We're not doctors. We're not therapists. We're not licensed. No, no training here is going to give you the, 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 the license to diagnose anybody. And we don't need to, is in my opinion. 
what we're interested in is what is the process? How is that child thinking with respect to a specific type of information? Does that make sense? And why are they either effective or ineffective in processing that type of information? That make sense? And why do they react the way they do? So that's what we're interested in. And fortunately for us, the research has, I think, shown, um, and the experience has shown, that when you change the way a child processes information, you can dramatically change the results they get in a, in a given situation, whether it's a situation with reading or writing a composition or a sentence or, or figuring out a math problem or taking a test or having to check your answers. <laughs> That's crazy talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, crazy talk. <laughs> so, so that, that's kind of what's behind where, where we've kind of come to these last five years. Um, and so I'm going to just skip through a couple of pages here. Page three is a little bit about us. Um, page four, some thank yous. A little bit about me and kind of my six kids and, you know, some of my struggles without the gory details. Um, page six is a little bit about what we're going to talk about for the training, the the, the basically to go through those 24 essential skills that's what we're going to cover in the first three days in the next three days we're going to cover detailed ways to apply those skills so when you get we'll, we'll start going over that learning style profile that some of you filled out or some of your kids filled out and when you see these different profiles how do you handle that what do you do with ADD, ADHD, or, or dyslexia, or autism? And what, what is going to give you a very effective program for that particular profile? Um, and then the last day, the part, kind of part three. So, so part one is tonight, it's the learning styles and strategies. Part two is going to be those 24 specific skills, which they're, that's perfect unto itself. That, there's nothing else you need. If you have your child and you see he's struggling with this, you do this, this, and this. If he's struggling with that, you do this, this, and that. And that's going to be perfect. That will take you through through Sunday. Um, and then Monday, we're going to get into some of the more specifics about working with multiple children, mul different diagnoses, different different profiles. Um, and Monday afternoon is going to be our practicum. We're actually going to have half a dozen kids here to work with, um, with you know, so you get your hands dirty, so to speak. Um, um, Monday night is an optional program and that is the ADHD and relationships so that's going to be talking more about adults um, I mean kids too but people married to them yeah <laughs> yeah um, and and for some for somebody who wanted to make a career out of counseling my opinion is you you if you if you have this information mm -hmm. and you can approach um, a, a couple in terms of their learning styles, communication styles, and a few other tidbits I'll, I'll throw out on, on Monday night, you you could make an entire career out of that and do really well. Um, um, Tuesday, we're going to continue during the day with the different, you know, autism, sensory, the different profiles, um, putting it into practice. Tuesday night will be... ADHD and addiction issues and why most people relapse why most addiction programs are doomed to failure why 90% of them they, they they walk out of rehab and within like a couple of days they're they're back using there's something that didn't get addressed and what is it well I was I it, I was working with my kids and, and adults and and the people here for for almost five years and all of a sudden it, it, it like the light came on it's like no wonder no wonder um, so I think that's gonna be fun again that's not essential for your certification but if, if it's something you want to attend I'm gonna do that it'll be a two-hour thing uh, Tuesday night and then Wednesday part three will be how do you run your business if you want to do this if you want to go work with kids 
where do you get started? How do you market it? How do you how do you meet people? How do you let people know? Um, um, how, what do you do when someone walks in the door or, or fills out a profile or or you know where do you take them? How do you work a program? How much do you charge? So all those questions we're gonna we're gonna mix them up and and throw them out there for the folks that just want to. I mean literally, if you want to start taking clients Thursday morning, you can. Go ahead. You, you'll be. I think you'll have everything you need to to go do it. Um, so that's it. That's basically it.